Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pod Fathers, the best parenting podcast in the universe, tolerated by Barstool Sports. It's your pal Clem here. It's the big man across the liver, across the liver, across the river. It's the two, <laughs> the two. What's so OG? I guess NG, the new generation Pod Fathers. Yeah. Uh, that, that's on the next sound, right? generation. Next generation Pod Fathers. Chapsy is in. Yeah, Chapsy's <laughs> at Barstool HQ. So of course, the two guys that are not at Barstool HQ are going to do this episode because that's the way it goes at Barstool. Your schedule just gets completely swamped. So me and the big man are going to bring you this week's episode so we can get it up for the uh, Pod Fam. And it's kind of been. I feel like I've just been going back and forth, playing a little bit of co-host tennis. I had you, then I had Chapsy by himself, and now we're back to you. Chapsy back from his uh, his main trip with his his own little Johnny Cakes. I'm happy to hear it was a very good time. He found his woods. How the hell are you doing, Big Man? You were out in San Diego with our boy Canelo again, right? <laughs> yeah. I, so I, <laughs> 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 I love it. I love that man. <laughs> so I was uh, I was a week <laughs> I was a week out of the hospital, Clem. <laughs> oh, I, got, I know I was a week out of the hospital I got back in the fucking ring with him so oh. <laughs> we did we did an awesome in, we we jammed so much into the San Diego trip <laughs> we did an awesome interview with him on the first day that we're there and then Rob Langevin who does all the uh, branded content he runs said he does a very good job shout out Rob he said I need to, you to do something physical with him like I was like, what, like jumping rope. <laughs> I can't do that. So we can Canelo and I, it's such a good experience together with this stupid interview that I said, Canelo, I got to do a little something. I know we'd put the body pads on. What can we do? Like, even if he gave me a tutorial on hitting the bag or he's like, would you like to spar? I'm like, oh, Jesus. And Rob's like, yeah, he'd love to. I was like, of course. I was like, what, but do you mean real sparring? I was like, can I hit you? And he says, uh, uh, you do what you think you can do. I was like, oh, fuck. That's, was, such, that's <laughs> such a demeaning thing to say to people, especially us big guys. <laughs> so uh, so I sparred him. I did the first three minutes where um, he wasn't throwing any punches. It was like a defensive thing. And I was I touched him a couple of times. And, but every now and again, he'd give me like, you know, and then I'd, I'd like, you know, kind of whatever. And then the second round, I said, uh, which I didn't make it through the second round. So <laughs> I didn't do two rounds. I said, Canelo, can you just hit me a couple times? I was like, you remember I got the – he's like, sure, sure, I'll hit you. So there was a fight a long time ago where he fought this guy named Callum Smith. Callum Smith is like 6'2". Canelo's 5'8". And um, so what he did is he uh, he deadened the guy's left arm. So by the 12th round – I think the fight went the distance. By the 12th round, the guy couldn't um, throw his left arm, his big left hand. And when the guy tried to – you know, and he smiled and Canelo's like, I got you. Like, his Canelo at one point pointed at the arm. So, because he, he hematomed him and he sort of did the same to me. Look, like, everyone on I, the, the yeah. Barstool YouTube or the yeah. Podfather's YouTube. Oh, my God. Yeah. Double. He lit you up. Yeah, lit and, me up. And show us the tattoo. Large has a tattoo on his arm that I think I forgot about. It is yeah. and- the saint. I, I did a pencil drawing of her when we first started uh, dating, and then years later, I had it transferred into a she, tattoo. She, it looks like it, it would be her, but it's the um, sketch of what's the guy that like stole the the, the Unabomber. Plane? Oh, oh Unabomber. Uh, DB, DB Cooper. DB Cooper. It looks yeah, like yeah. Annie as DB Cooper. Yeah, it's Annie as Heisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so he he lit me like so. Afterwards, he just started to you know batter me on the outside, like hitting me in the chest. And this as opposed to he hit me once in the side and like kicked my head back. I wrapped him against the ropes. Like I wrapped him and I went on him. I grabbed the back of his headgear and I pulled it. And he's like, get off me, man. And we what had speed, a really what speed really are we time. dealing with here too with him? What I speed said, is he going? Canelo, we're half speed, right? He says, No, no, half speed would kill you. I said, Okay, great. <laughs> so I'm I'm doing this because I'm so tall, Clem. I'm 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 hitting him with jabs, maybe that hard. Like maybe that hard. At the most, because I'm I'm that far. So if I was to throw my left hand that hard, you know, by the way, you got to go on YouTube to see this because it's fucking pathetic. If I was to throw my left hand like that quickly, it would look relatively not impressive, but it would look like a punch. As soon as I went to throw my left hand at any point, I'm left handed. So it's like, a you know, my left hand's tucked back. It's supposed to be my power hand. What power I have (laughs) wherever I was throwing it. That was no longer there. As soon as he saw me starting to throw my left hand, it was like, it was like this. So, like, all my oh, no. left hands in the video, and then we'll put out the video close to uh, September 17th, I think, the is when thir- the fight is. 13th round, YouTube? 
No, well, this is going to be the branded content right okay. before the Canelo Triple G fight. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be a bigger uh, production thing. We had like three cameras on me and stuff. So, uh, but you'll see, like when I go, it's almost like oh, I'll just throw the thing out. I'll try to sweep to somewhere where he was. It's it's so sobering to probably step into a batter's box. Not probably, but to step into a batter's box against somebody who's a pitcher. Yeah, go against Edwin Diaz, and you're like, oh, like, you, oh, Edwin Diaz, you blow the save, you suck. It's like, all right, step in the box, and then step just, in the box. you're not uh, even yeah. swinging, and the ball's hitting the catcher's mitt. And he's not throwing his full speed. Yeah. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I remember 90. there were all these hedge fund guys that used to go to Yankees fantasy camp, and Yankees fantasy camp was expensive. It was an adult fantasy camp, and all the ex Yankee greats used to go there and really, like, let guys kind of play baseball. All right, here's Mike McCarthy, old Irish guy who used to trade. And who's on your team, too? Um, you know, Stevie Rabinowitz? Okay, we'll get him in the box. Like, it's all these Italian, Jewish, Irish guys all from the thing against these monsters, you know. And everybody was very nice and let people, like, kind of play and enjoy the uh, baseball camp for adults, except for Goose Gossage. Goose Gossage mm -hmm. used to brush guys back. Like if you were crowding the plate and stuff like that, like he wasn't about that bullshit. <laughs> and he used to fucking bring the heat. Canelo luckily didn't do that. Canelo was extremely gracious. And then he had like some other thing he had to do right after us. And he left. He just left the other team cameraman. Like he, you know, because he's got a fight to do and stuff. Yeah. But for some reason, this is me talking about Canelo Alvarez. He is so gracious to me in particular and Barstool in general with the amount of access he gives us before a fight. Like, he had gone – he had two professional boxers there. I'm going to stop after this. Two professional boxers. Get in here. They did four rounds of sparring, full-speed sparring. Canelo was doing mostly defense. Like, vamos, 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 and the guy's hitting him and stuff like that. As soon as that guy was tucked out after four full rounds, get out. New legs. New legs come in. Four more rounds. This is Canelo now. He's done eight rounds straight while these younger dudes are fresh. Like, vamos, vamos. He's sitting on the ropes, you know. And then that guy gets out. He's like, you, get in here. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> yeah, and so I went in there and we had a we had a good time. So, yeah, that'll come out. Uh, I'll, I'll put part of it out in social and, um, you know, uh, but it'll be out <laughs> sometime in September. Again, we're, we're here talking about our sweet pop pop, uh, you know, 50 half 100, fresh out yeah. of the hospital. You yep. should have just kept your hospital bracelet on, too. I think that would have <laughs> maybe given you at least one or two less, you know, punches to the kidneys and stuff like that. Yeah. And this is like everyone that's older. I mean, I'd say even like 30 and older. And then especially if you have kids, let alone multiple kids, your body just starts breaking down. It's crumbling upon itself. And our guy is in there facing the best pound for pound fighter on the planet. So shout out the big man. I'm just happy you're, I think you're flying back across country. This isn't right. You're taking the red eye. You're too damn old to be taking the red eye, old man. We're too the, big of a company. To be I took the red the eye that night. They changed me into an outfit. They brought me to the cove. I had to pretend I was talking to sea lions. This is all going to be in the video. Then yeah. we go back. I have a couple of bottles of sake because I just need to unwind. And then I get on the fucking red eye. I come back. I'm in the office the next morning doing a twisted history of cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Guy, wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, so happy to hear you made it back. You and your chaps had markedly different uh, trips. Chaps went to yeah. a fucking cabin in Maine and did nothing. You got yeah. your ass kicked by a Mexican boxer I, I'm and thinking, then had to fly back. I'm thinking chaps is sore, but in a different spot. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All deliveries in the rear. <laughs> uh, so, how you doing buddy how's everything i haven't spoken to you in two weeks so everything was going pretty damn good large i'm not gonna lie Every, the my life was going pretty smoothly <laughs> and then the kids had they finally ended their camp i remember camp going for the entire summer did you yeah. go to day camp as a kid was that a thing in brooklyn yeah, i didn't really I, I, I doubted it so but when i was a kid i feel like you would get maybe like fourth of july watch some fireworks and then you were in camp till basically like maybe the last week of the uh summer and then you kind of have a week where your family's just you know trying to get your ass entertained get you out of their hair and then it's back to school maybe some back to school shopping all that stuff it's August 8th right now recording this. This is they're, they're just back from camp. And now I have a, a week, a month, excuse me. I have a month. It's back like COVID now where it's like they have nothing else going on. They're just in the house. At least I could shove their asses outside. But it's, you know, 95 and humid out there. No. So I can't do that too long. They're fighting with each other. They're tired because camp just fucking 
drains their batteries and it's i'm losing it now i was in a really good place for a few weeks uh i think some uh, some people might have heard there was like i'm helping out with nate and hubs uh editing editing the the the, the site now with uh Coligon. i'm kind of just helping out for now and you know maybe a full-time thing in the future we'll see so I was in a pretty good place. I had a lot of work on my plate. I had uh, no one in my hair to bother me. And it was just a good routine. And now I have more work, but no time to do it because I have kids just all in my shit. So uh, the Frazzle Clem, anyone who enjoys Frazzle Clem, you're going to hear him over the next month here until fucking the, the, beauty, the beauty that is public school comes back here in, a, in about a month. So I'm, I'm hurting right now. I'm, I'm crawling to the, the finish line of summer. But it sounds like the McCarthy house is in a much worse place than the class of day Clem is at least mentally. And it's because a kid is going to school in a, in a weird fucking, you know, it just lets you know to cherish these crazy times because there is like an end date to it all. We had 50 people in our churros yesterday. Just, we did the garden room, oh. which is kind of behind the uh, piano, not the main dining room. And, uh, Oh, just our family, just our family and stuff. And, like towards the end of it, my mom. So my dad just had his knee replaced. So he hasn't been out of Brooklyn. He's, he's having a little bit of a tough recovery from it. So he hasn't been out of Brooklyn since he had the knee replaced nearly a month ago. So this was his maiden voyage out. He's not driving yet. My younger brother, Neil, took him and him and my mom. So my kids have only seen my parents maybe outside of Finn because Finn vacations in Brooklyn. But outside of Finn, my kids really haven't seen my parents too much this summer. Um, so my parents were there yesterday, my mother-in-law, all, everyone was there. And it wasn't until afterwards, like my parents going home, like now know that they won't see Mick before he leaves on Wednesday to go to Tuscaloosa. And then my mom got extremely emotional. And then, and then like when you see your mother crying, like, no, oh, it's not good. And then like, if that's not good, you know, like then Bridget like saw it and it started to hit her and she was like. So she's, I started crying. I'm like, what the fuck did I just pay four grand for? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like I just I bought a, a huge dinner and it's it's ending in all these waterworks. But, you know, I, he, there's just, he's the glue. He's, the kid is the glue that holds his family together. Like we all came back to the, from the restaurant to the house. And like, I was like, where's Mick? Like, why isn't he back yet? And Bridget's like, oh, he's stopped off at the bank. He's already deposited the money that he received at his party. I was like, who the fuck does that? Who <laughs> does kid. that? Who the <laughs> fuck does that? So, so yeah, so um, I'm taking Bridge, Finn, uh, Annie, and Mick, obviously, uh, down on Wednesday. We're going Wednesday through Saturday uh, to Tuscaloosa and um, to drop him off at college. And it's been extremely – like, we'll come back from something – and get out of the car. Mick could strip, drove Finn the other day to dinner, and we all went to dinner somewhere. And then we got back out. Annie and I, uh, oh, you know what? I can't even talk about this. It's killing me. It's, it's fucking killing, you up. I can tell in your eyes. It's, it's killing the family. I'm paying fifty some odd thousand dollars a year to to destroy my family. And it, and I told him the other day too. I was like, "There's nobody who deserves it more than you." Like, so when mm -hmm. I say that, the, when I put price tags on it, that's me being an asshole. You deserve everything. You are, he is the fucking Rosetta Stone for high school kids. And I'm not joking. This kid is, you know what I mean? Finn's going to be the bar exam. You know what I mean? And Bridget's <laughs> an X Factor. I don't know where Bridget's going. So this kid is the Rosetta Stone. So like every now and again, we'll come home, like I said the other night, and like Finn and Brid uh, Mick and Finn were driving. And then as I'm getting out of my car with Danny walking by, I see them hugging in the front seat, you know, because Finn needed something. And then mm -hmm. Finn's emotional about it. I'm emotional about it. I said, Annie, this is going to be a terrible trip. <laughs> like, thank God we were flying in and out of Atlanta. So we have to drive like two and a half hours to Tuscaloosa, uh, you know, from Tuscaloosa on the way home. Because when we say goodbye to him on Saturday, you're going to have four fucking puddles. You know what I mean? And I don't know how he's going to be because he's got a lot of exciting stuff ahead of him. You know, he's got some wood to chop. He's going He's to, going to have a fucking blast. What is, what's Alabama in the preseason polls right now? Are they, are they one? Like that's, that's, like, yeah. Is it not one? I should I should be asking right now. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Nick Saban has more national championships than losses as a coach at Alabama. Is that fucking crazy? <laughs> he's, he's been there a while. He's got more national championships than losses, I believe. It's something weird like that. Um, so <laughs> yeah, he's in for it. He's in for, 
a good time. Then that's not anything that we're questioning. I'm just questioning whether the fabric of my family (laughs) can hold it together through this. Because when we get back to, you know what I mean? And he's going to Alabama. He's not dying. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah. like, he's, he's going, going to the he's, best place he could ever go for four years. He's going to, 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 you know, what is 18 to 20? It's not boy. It's not man. It's like, it's heaven for an 18 to a 21 year old is where he's yeah. going. There is going yeah. to be Southern bells. There is going to be awesome sports. There is going to be alcohol that he will be responsibly drinking at some point Great after he turns 21, obviously. Great, Great weather. weather. Uh, like that freedom that everyone experienced when they went to college where it's just like, holy shit, I don't have, you know, this guy who's going to yell at me if I take his Coca-Cola can from him. <laughs> so he's going to have a the whole facilities are all top notch. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, and you know, like I said, he, the, he got a bid to the fraternity that he wants to join. So he's going to be doing that. And um, yeah. He's, so he's been, the kid of bar, large bar stool too. So, you know, maybe I'll get yeah, a maybe. couple uh, brownie points <laughs> along the way. So, well, so this is the reason you guys have to subscribe to the Barstool Grown Up YouTube is you can you can either see any of an episode. Annie drops off a tray full of tea and like crumpets for large. There's a chance he's going to show you how Canelo bruised him up or you're going to just see the tears well in his eyes as he talks about his kid who I can confirm is a fucking peach of peaches and he yeah. is the absolute best. I feel like a lot of times the first kid is the glue because they're there from day one. They're kind of set the bed. I can tell Sienna's going to be our bedrock. AJ's going to be our lava that basically explodes. I think I was the same for my family as the firstborn. I don't know how about your family. I feel like you might have been kind of the the. Were you the glue for your family, or was your older brother more the? Like Terrence and I were so close in age that yeah, they yeah. were interchangeable. I always became the student, and he was the worker. You know what I mean? So Terrence yeah. had blazed the trail and done everything before me, and he was very good at it too. Like when I when I say worker, please don't people take that as a student is better than a worker because it's not <laughs> nowadays. But I find like Finn gets more headlines from me. You know, Finn is, Finn's wonderful. Yeah, I, I love and he's a fucking character, you know, and Mick just sort of grinds it out as, you know, whatever. So I'm, I'm hoping and listen, he's not guaranteed to be there for four years. Like I told him, you just signed a one year contract with Alabama. If you don't like them or if you're not performing well enough, then well, you can either leave or I will pull you. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 what will happen because um, I'm not. I'm not I don't know whether or not college is a waste of time already. I'm not going to have this fucking kid waste my time and money. That's me getting a little bit angry at it when nothing has happened before and he's never disappointed me as far as that goes. <laughs> but I also made sure he knows if he doesn't like it. Like if he you know, going to school in the south away from your parents may not be from you for you. Yeah. It just might not. It sounds great. So banging out and stuff like that, but if you're not into it, you know, there's a thousand other places for him to go. So I think he's going into it with the right head, knowing that he's, you know, he's not signed away to be in there for four years. But something tells me that after four years, he's going to wish he had another six. You know what yeah, I mean? After so, four minutes, he's going to he's going to yeah. be like, yep, we're good. Lock me up for for life. Throw the franchise tag on me. Do that whatever must, you want. Got to check my lung capacity. Hold on. Oh, this is what this is what I'm dealing with with a half a hundred co-host here. <laughs> Up, oh, we're looking good. We're at four thousand. Oh, I got it. I got. It. <laughs> I, I hope. I hope this is the first time and the last time we have to do a lung capacity on a on a barstool podcast. There, that has to be the first half a hundred, man. God damn it! Like, I hope. I, I'm just hoping I make it to half a hundred. But if I do, it's not going to be. I got to do it again. I'm sparring Jake Paul later today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, got, I, I honestly i can't believe the fucking idiots here at parcel one of kansas podcast you're not getting this shit anywhere else it's no. the fucking uh, it, it no. entertains me at the very least and i think i have a good gauge on it uh i like the way you said that it's like a mutual team option it's like hey you're signed in you want to bail out of this contract you're out but if i want to bail you out of this contract because it's like some kids i think go into college Thinking like, all right, I made it. And if if the parents are helping pay for it, it's like, I, I have my free ride here. It's like, no, no, no. You have to get, you know, you're going to be getting the report cards, the GPA. I wonder if that's as real time as the report cards in high school. Like you were telling me you could go on right now and just, you know, or not in the summer, but October be like, all right, looks like we're struggling in a uh, home ec right now. Right. One hundred percent. It it astounded me, and there is flaws to that system because there was yes. a lag from the teachers. Sometimes, if your thing went in and they hadn't gotten to you yet, as far as marking your paper or something, it just existed as a zero. 
So sometimes you could hit something up and you'll be like, oh, I got an F. I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me, Finnegan? Are you are you are you a D this. in science? I remember you yelled like, no, no. on this. <laughs> yeah. And he went. The teacher's like, no, no. Uh, he submitted everything. We just haven't seen it yet. Give it about a week's lag. And I and I wasn't checking. I don't I'm not draconian with that shit. Every week I don't do it. I I don't believe Alabama is like that. And I think that the kids have a right to not send a copy of their grades to their parents. Do you know about this? No. Kids don't, I, kids don't sounds about right, it. though. It yeah, yeah. Sounds about right for this world we're living yeah, in so now. So Mick had told me about that. I said, I said, imagine that. And he started laughing, too. I was like, imagine. <laughs> imagine you don't think. Right? <laughs> so, but the the one-year contract, I, I and I think this is a good parenting tip. I will never let my kids quit something in between. Like, like Mick's a perfect example. He's played every sport there is. Like, he got his uh, state championship ring for basketball this week. Coaches took him out for lunch, you know, just him because he's one of the earliest kids to leave because he's an SEC kid. And um, it's a beautiful uh, state championship school ring. And he's got one for football, too, that he had his sophomore year when he played in MetLife Stadium. But then he stopped playing football after sophomore year. But he had played through the season. He might have not wanted to play the rest of the season. And he knows that he could never quit on something that he starts. But they also don't have to be locked into stuff for the rest of their lives. So mm -hmm. I think the fact that he decided to just do basketball, not do – and Finnegan. Finnegan is starting his sophomore year of football right now. I just picked up his equipment today. And I said, Finn, you know, by the way, I know you seem to be having a great thing. By the way, Finn looks fantastic because he's been lifting all summer. He's lifting, yeah. Yeah. And I said, by the way, if at some point, at this point next year, you don't want to play football anymore – I don't care. I'd rather you do because I like what's happening. We'll find something else for you to do, but know that you're locked in. And I think going forward, kids got to know that they're graduating from college and they think they're going to be lawyers and they think they're going to mm -hmm. be aerospace technicians. And, and that's usually not what happens. Like I was a government major and I'm fighting Canelo Alvarez and I'm about to do <laughs> macro dosing on catfishing and the twisted history of Vikings and barstool fighting, like, you know, and talking to parenting about you. I'm not going to talk about the government at all. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I, you know, like that was I, my path. I thought I was going to be a priest when I was a kid. Then I thought I was going to be a lawyer. Then I thought I was going to be a doctor. Then I thought I was going to be a lawyer. And I'm none of those. So, like, I want my kids to know that they can start something, not quit on it. And once they find out that it's not for you at a respectful time, they can move on. That's a good way to go about it, too. My parents were never about, like, hey, once you start it, you finish it. I don't think they like quitting, but I do like the thing. Listen, you it's not going to be forever. You don't have to do whatever you're doing now forever or in four years or whatever. I, I kind of like that where it's like at least you learn how to tough it out, build some character. And a lot of times in anything in life, you find out ways to kind of deal with it. Right. So I used, and that was the perfect way to put it, too. I was a sports management major, which was a, like the hot uh major back in the day back when I was going to college where it was like, let's just get a bunch of sports fans in. We'll get their money. I started Seton Hall. I fucking hated it. I liked, I had some friends there, had some friends that I liked, but it was a commuter school. Everyone went home on the weekend. And if you didn't go home on the weekend, you were basically in Greek life. And I didn't want to be Greek. That was just one thing I had. So I ended up stay, sticking out for the year and I was fucking miserable. And I know my parents were probably like, I don't know if I want you transferring because I want you to stick it out. But I ended up transferring to Siena. It was Siena and Syracuse. I got into both and Syracuse just seemed it just, it was such a big school. I was like, I'm kind of just taking a chance on something I don't know. I happen to have some buddies at Siena and I, I visited it. I loved it. And I was like, this just seems like a safer option. I went to school for business because they didn't have sports marketing at Siena, but I always want to be in sports. And like you said, large, you know, my first job was at a college. I sold group tickets to the New York Liberty. Right. Do you know how hard it is to sell group tickets? Oh my God. What's that New smell? York? Oh, it's your yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> my, we were at a Mets game once and my wife was like, Oh, I feel so bad for like, what, what are the people who are selling coffee do, you know, at the Mets game or like the shitty souvenirs? I feel so bad for those people that are selling the things that don't sell. I go, you know, you're dating a group sales <laughs> ticket rep for the New York Liberty. And it's just one of those things. And you grind. I remember I set the record for most, uh, tickets sold in like a two week period by like, you know, a, a part timer, which is what I was. And I was still operating in the red because I was commuting from home. You're paying all the kind of bullshit from home. Right. Yeah. All the, all the fees and stuff like that. And then, you know what? You just grind it out. I got a chick job at Sporting News doing customer service, got a job at ESPN with some of the skills I picked up at Sporting News. You'll work your way up or I just end up a fucking bar stool just out of the blue. You don't know what you're going to do. You right. just grind it out in college. And like you said, large, like you thought you were going to be lawyer. 
doctor. You, I always wanted to be in sports. I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do in sports. And none of this stuff, the stuff, podcasts were not a thing. The blogs were barely even a thing back when I was going to school. All this mm-hmm. shit that has gone, just learn skills. Learn as many skills as you can. Um, I always say learn Photoshop, learn video editing, audio editing, whatever, the f- fucking TikToking, all that kind of nonsense. So that's a good that's a good message to make there. So we are, Especially we are at doing this age. Time. At this age. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think at that younger age, like if AJ's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, maybe you'd be like, nah, I want you to do Little League again. Like, you yeah. know, like I don't, I don't, fight it. Yeah. I don't like to give kids the opportunity to make decisions for the most part. I just don't. I don't think they've earned them yet. And my kids know that. Like, my kids don't get to pick restaurants. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they barely get to do that. And, and then now, like, as they've earned it, and we've had this conversation before, they kind of appreciate it, you know? Um, so I've, I made a lot of decisions for them when they first started out and maybe pushed them to do certain things. I've never been a sports dad, so I don't give a fuck about it. Uh, but now I'm certainly at a situation where even Bridget, who's 12, like Bridget's starting tennis and stuff. She's starting late, you know, and whatnot. But if she doesn't like that, I'd probably ask her to stick with it a little bit longer because, you know what I mean? Like she's 12 yeah, and, and tennis is hard. But, like, let's say you stick with it that extra year and you make that leap to where it becomes more enjoyable. You know, because no one's good at tennis after a season. No one's good at baseball yeah. after a season. You know what I'm saying? Like, give it a – but in high school, it's it's a little bit different. And then certainly, like I'm saying, with college and then, like you're saying, with careers. I mean, if they're not ready to make decisions by then, you fucking failed. <laughs> yeah, you're in some, some real trouble. And I will say, like, uh, there, I guess there is some – there. I imagine the 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 – Mood in the McCarthy house would be different if he was going to say a Seton Hall, which is you know down the road on the Turnpike yes. or the Parkway, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck you guys have in Jersey there. Um, it, it, or you know if he was a commuter or something like that. But Rutgers, going, if he's yeah, going to yeah. Rutgers, if he's going to any, I mean, there's so many fine universities in New Jersey, and um, and with a nice little discount for uh, residents, right? God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> That's why oh, Alabama – Alabama is 50%. I mean, you can think about Alabama. Somebody had asked if it was a bigger uh, brand globally than Notre Dame, and it's just – oh, Brandon Walker had asked it, which is a dumb question. It's nowhere near being as big a global pro, uh, um, brand, brand as, as Notre Dame. At least I don't think so. And I think one of the reasons being, too, is that 50% of Alabama are Alabamans, like, you know, because they get to go there for a much – you know, bigger discount where I think Notre Dame has more of a um, certainly a national presence and, and to a certain degree, international presence with its uh, with its student body. You know, I don't yep. think it's 50 percent Indianans. Um, so and it's also very it's a much smaller school. Uh, so that's it. So Mick's going away. Next time I speak to you, we're going to be a slightly emptier nest and we're not doing well with it. We're yep. not doing well with it. So everyone say your thoughts and prayers at this point. By the time this gets released, you guys will be down there because this comes out on a Thursday. So you guys will be going through the shit. I imagine there is orientations, move in, all that kind of stuff. We'll get a full recap of the move in, the bed, bath and beyond. Did you guys already do like the whole bed, bath? You might do that down there. So you don't have to lug it on the plane with you. Right. So you do that all there. So we'll get, definitely Clem. get that. Clem, this place, every one of these kids has like a storage unit. Oh that God. you can already be sending stuff down there. Oh so the day and age of you filling up a van, mm-hmm. like to getting the what's it, Thule, 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 whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, those things I don't about. know how to say that name. It always drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I've never owned one, but you know, or you know, putting those things on your roof. Those days are over. You know what I mean? You go down there, like you said, we'll be down there a little bit early. It doesn't move until Friday. We get there Wednesday night, so hopefully we can get to a Walmart or, or something like that. And um, and the rest of the stuff is like waiting for him down there, just waiting. We have two suitcases just filled with clothes. That's it. I imagine Walmart's in Tuscaloosa are to what Starbucks are to New York. So it's basically you're crossing <laughs> yeah. the street, you're just going to another yeah. super. Oh, yeah. you're going from the super Walmart or the regular yeah. Walmart or the. <laughs> Somebody said, "Did you make? Did you make reservations? Because like at restaurants, because you know it's going to be a lot of people moving in. You know, they spread out the freshman class moving in." So, however many thousands of kids are in this, a lot of, I'm like, don't they handle a hundred thousand people every fucking weekend in the fall? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I may, I might not get a, a table at Dreamland Barbecue that I want, but I think I'll, I think I'll be okay. So, oh man, so yeah, yeah, we'll get a whole recap about that when the big man gets back. I'm telling you right now, 
the saddest place on earth will be that car ride from Tuscaloosa back to Atlanta with just four McCarthy's in the car. I am not looking forward to it. It's going to be the proverbial cartoon rain cloud just going above the car. So every, you know what though? Everything is still good. The McMahon is still in uh, Jersey. We lost our, the fucking McMahon are just, we're losing McMahon by the fucking, by the right. barrel right now. Yeah. And they're, yeah. they're good fucking people. I'm going to miss people. Coley. We kind of just touched on it last time. Me and Chapsy real quick, but uh, I'm bummed for Coley. Definitely wish him the best. Oh, and <laughs> I'm just checking his goddamn once again, this fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, we have to give congratulations. Our girl, Marina. Yes. The Marina, the Marina, Pod the mother. Mar- Marina mom, the Marina yeah. mama. She, she finally had that damn baby. Um, I shouldn't probably say that. She finally had that baby. Uh, I said, everyone wish eight pounds, one ounce. Beautiful. Kid. Really? Oh, nice. she, there's a picture of the kid. I hate pictures of newborns. They usually stink, but, uh, they got a picture of the kid, uh, rolling over on side and smiling. It's probably gas. So, uh, congratulations to her and Rob, a beautiful little baby girl. Already skating, already a Bruins fan. It's 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 amazing to see when, you, when the parents are really uh, focused on something. So that's 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 fucking awesome. We got to have her on. Uh, we wanted to have her on for like a little uh, interview or something like that. Like we used to do with everybody, but uh, it's hard enough just to get the co-host in the goddamn chair here. Uh, wanted to do a quick content corner because my guy Lars said he saw an absolutely tremendous movie with Bridget, and I want to let all the pod fam know what we're dealing with here. So large, tell me about your big movie with uh, bridge. I, you know what? I have zero in common with 12 year old girls. I'm very happy to say that. <laughs> so when Bridget's <laughs> friends came over at clam years ago, I used to do tea parties and I do the, Oh, I've done them with you. I've done a tea party with you. Yes. Where I go to the bakery. I'll get some, you know, some uh, pastries. Or I'll make like finger sandwiches, the little stupid cucumber ones. You know what I mean? Like a pimento cheese spread ones. I'll do that and I'll cut them up and I'll make them for Bridget and her friends. And we'll do tea party and I'll sit down with them and I'll teach them how to make tea and whatnot. And the girls always love that. As you're transitioning out, you know, like this 12 year old thing, it doesn't slap anymore. And to the point too, like whenever there's a new cartoon out, like what's the latest cartoon that's come out? Like Coco or one of those, like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Coco. Uh, we'll say Bluey's coming out in the third season soon, right? So that's yeah, but like, like even one, a great one, show. yeah, one in the movies, like whatever the big one in the movies is. That was always a done deal. Oh, I'm gonna take Bridge to see that. Oh, I'm gonna take Bridge to see that. She doesn't want to see those anymore. Like mm-hmm. you know, she's beyond that. It's rom coms and Stranger Things and good stuff, but just not what I used to do with her. So. Uh, Jesus, this is a sad fucking thing. So I said to Bridge the other day, I said, hey, Bridge, why don't we go um, Why don't we go and do lunch, and then we're going to get our nails done, and I'm going to take you to see a movie. She's like, yeah, okay. She had nothing that day. And she's had you know, a little bit. So we go, get our nails done. I, got, I, I do a twinsies thing. I don't know if you can see that, but hold on. <laughs> Boom. So I always do my just my big toe. I, I love it. Same, I do the same as what she's doing. And um, I let Sienna do my toenails whenever she wants to paint stuff. I get right. she gets the big toenail done. But I, I put on the wraps. I had things on the eyes. I'm soaking the whole deal. But then we went to go see a movie, and it was called Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. It's a very small, like, production type thing. And I, we sat there, and it was fucking uncomfortably awful when we <laughs> sat down. Like, we were like, like that, she would never say it, but you could just tell. Like she was dying to be on her phone. She was dying to be anywhere, but at this silly movie where this this shell it was stop action. This shell was talking, and I'll tell you, at some point, it just it it pivoted, and I'm, it was the most adorable movie she or I have ever seen. We literally loved it, and at the end, the cell the shell sings a uh, peaceful, easy feeling, which is an eagle song. And the shell's got this high voice. It's Jenny Slate, I believe. And, and I don't know. It was just, and, and it was very, so it was, it was a good one to take my 12 year old. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. And the YouTube will throw in the trailer on just so people can kind of see what, what we're A24. looking at. You know, so it's like, it, it's, so it's like this, this uh, guy meets this shell at an Airbnb and the shell has this tragic story about losing his family. And then they find the family and stuff. And just the way he, this thing has to live its life. Or dip its feet in like honey to walk up the walls to get like, you know, it's just absolutely endearing for some reason. I don't know if it's going to do well, but it also seems like it might be one of those things where it wins all the awards yep. of, you know, like animated or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. She wants, they watch 60 minutes every week, her and her grand or him and his grandmother, Marcel and Marcel and his grandmother. Then the grandma dies. 
Hey, spoilers! What the fuck are we talking oh, about shit. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Leslie Stahl is like their fucking hero. You know, Leslie Stahl from 60 Minutes and stuff. I think a lot of it gets given up in the trailer. And uh, and it goes on this thing to go find the Shell's family. Absolutely bizarre. There's no reason to see this. There's no reason this movie should have been made. I've never it even is, heard of it. I can't believe you found out about it. It's one, and I took a flyer on it. I had no idea what this thing was. You didn't no even ask Jeff D. Lowe? You didn't even ask Jeff D. Lowe? I didn't ask a fucking soul. And I went with her, and I had nothing but regrets for the first 30 minutes. Then all of a sudden, you start to get in, like, you start to get emotionally invested in this stupid shell, you know? And um, so, anyway, Marcel the shell with shoes on is surprisingly recommended by me <laughs> and, and and listen if you tell me no large that was a piece of dog shit i hated it cool i get it this shouldn't be liked but i fucking adored it i thought that it and i've been listening to peaceful easy feeling being sung by a fucking shell <laughs> every now and again like you know what i mean it's it's and it's a terrible rendition i, I should bring it up I, and uh so that's that it, it looks like the shell almost looks like a hermit crab with a, with a pair of shoes on in case people are trying to like figure out what it is. But again, check it out. Um, first question. Did you buy a fresh uh, round of sodas for everybody? Fresh cups? Because it seems like uh, I don't think this was at an AMC. It looks like by me, it's by a lot of the fancier theaters that show films instead of movies. Are we looking at, do we get fresh uh, concessions or were they snuck in? How do we deal our, do our concessions? That's an excellent question. And Bridge is not... <laughs> Yeah. It is a terrible so rendition, but it and uh but yeah, Bridges and so. Bridges and a snack person. Like, you know, she um, so we both got huge bottles of Dasani, probably for six dollars a piece <laughs> while we we're in there. And I smuggled in a bar of dark Bridge eats the dark chocolate, oh, like the eighty oh. percent cacao, and I love it too. So we split like a dark chocolate, one of those ones you see in like the the bakery section, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the baking section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like 80% cacao, almost too bitter for me, but she loves it. And then afterwards, we went to this uh, uh, build your own salad place and we had a lovely lunch because she knew we were eating right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And on the way there, she had one of those things from Starbucks, uh, like a, a side berry blast. No, no, <laughs> she gets that, that those coolers. Okay. Like, you know, different shades of purple and shit like that. I think there's acai in it and stuff. So to, to answer your question, I have not smuggled in a soda. What is this now? I don't think I've done it in 2022. Wow. Wow. Movies but remember, because they, the, they changed the cups on me. <laughs> That's so why I was, I was forced go. to stop and we never jump back on. Because me and Annie saw Where the Crawdads Sing. You want to see like a couple's moving go off for like a little date night. And again, we had to reluctantly buy sodas. <laughs> they go, um, excuse me, sir. Uh, did you buy that cup today? Yeah. Why? Is there a problem, mister? Uh, well, it, it says Avengers Endgame on it. That came out <laughs> three years ago. And it seems that it's flaking apart at the bottom right now. So I, I don't know if I can believe you. I'll have to look at our term inventory. It says, it says vote for Trump on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the record. My boy Large, and again, these things don't usually mean anything because fucking the internet, you never know what people are reviewing. Rotten Tomatoes gives Marcel the shell. Oh, what does it give it? You want to give me an over number what you think? Rotten Tomatoes, the fans or the uh the that's critics? a very that's a very good question. It's a very good question. Uh we'll go we'll go critics and fans. You I will me- say that the critics probably really enjoy this movie. So I'm gonna say that it's 80 or above. Okay, and then what about the fans? I'm going to think it probably, like I said, I wouldn't blame fans if they didn't like it because he could have went in. So I'm going to say the fans, well, prob- most people know what they're getting into and so wouldn't be totally surprised like me. And again, I loved it, but I would say probably a 65% are on the fans. Critics gave it 98%. On 98? <laughs> really? Yep, and the audience, 91%. So our boy wow. Lars stumbled upon a fucking banger of a movie. Like wow. I said, I think it could, babe, I've never seen anything other than the one-minute trailer we just watched and heard the song. This could be a Babe the Pig of the Oscars, which was a surprise nominee back in the day. Remember that? Best right, right. Stuff like that. So uh, Marcel Deschel, again, I don't, 
look by me. There's one showing a day at the fancy movie theaters. Not even you're not looking at AMC. You're not going anywhere that's going to sell you a tub of popcorn and hot pretzels and stuff like that. You're going to be near places that sell salads and whatnot. Yeah, and hummus. Yeah, and hummus. <laughs> Maybe some hummus if you're lucky. Uh, but Marcel the Shell. I mean, I might go take the Santa to see this now too. So um, hour yeah, twenty nine so. PG. It- yeah, uh, an hour 29. And Bridget looked at me during the thing. She's like, do you think this was G or PG? Like, during the thing. And I was like, oh, that's a terrible question to ask. She's asked me if I took her to a baby movie. Yeah, You know what I mean? Tough. And then as we had gotten through, I walked out. I said, Bridget, what did you think? When you would ask me uh, G or PG, she's like, that was definitely a PG movie. And I was like, mm. what? Because I told you, like, I already put it out of the bag. The grandmother dies. So there was, like, some older you know, consequential type conversations. Marcel you know? does have that little run with heroin after his family dies. It sounds right. like it's a little dark. Oh, yeah. at some point. oh and, he, and he, there was, he had no bus fare. So he had to, he had to blow another yeah. shell. At one point. Yeah. He had, <laughs> had to make station. his own way. I believe that is it called roadhead. If you're a shell, I don't know. Road <laughs> I don't shell. Know. I don't know. <laughs> so that's large as a content corner trip, a fucking delightful content corner trip that hopefully people take the recommendation of uh, my content corner. We have a, uh, uh, this is the thing. Going to the movies is nice. Sienna asked if we could watch Lightyear because we didn't see it in the. I didn't. I didn't even know it came out in the movies. Mm-hmm. Came out on Disney Plus streaming, so I was like, "This isn't the one we have to pay for Disney Plus, right?" Like we pay our Disney Plus. It's not the extra twenty bucks. It was not. I love Toy Story. Toy Story, the trilogy, is like one of my favorite things ever. I don't acknowledge the fourth movie. <laughs> Lightyear. It just. It did not grab any of us. Oh, for four. Two really? four-year-old parents, a seven-year-old girl, four-year-old son, not one person. And we watched it like as sometimes we'll let them eat dinner as they watch because we know they'll shovel food in their mouths blindly as they continue to zone out on the screen. Didn't encapsulate them all. I am shocked. Absolutely shocked. They have completely destroyed this goddamn Toy Story franchise. So it was oh, for four, at least for us. I don't know if other people liked it. However, I will say this. Chip and Dale, we talked about this a few uh, months ago yeah. on the pod. We did watch that, and I don't know if I ever gave the review. Whoever said it was like watching Rod- a modern-day Roger Rabbit, the absolute perfect way to say it. Really? We loved fucking Chip and Dale. It's, it's kind of like – it's. They're cartoons, they're tripping down, but they're, you know, a little older. They talk about, you know, they're running the 90s. They talk about the Rescue Rangers, and Chip, and Chip kind of – He's kind of like a, a C-list, D-list celebrity now going on reality shows and doing that thing. Oh. Uh, wait, that's Dale. Chip is is like, you know, he's the fancy one. He's kind of like living in the hills with leather-bound books, probably has you on his in his phone book, something like that. Dale's gone a little bit more of the Hollywood uh, D-lister route. And it's like, you know, you're, you're mingling with other Disney characters. It's And it brings it into the real world. So they have agents. It's very cool, very fun. And... The kids loved it. Again, seven-year-old girl, four-year-old boy, both parents, all entranced the entire time. And it then led to the kids wanting to watch Rescue Rangers every day, which is probably why Disney Crate came out with this movie, right? Mm -hmm. So it was – and I think – I think – yeah, you don't want to gamble right now, Large. You you hit a home run with Marcel. If Bridge was ever just looking for something, you could throw on a Chippendale Rescue Rangers. It might be a little young for her, but it was – it's something that I think the whole family can love. So – you know, a plus recommendation from me, Chippendale. Uh, I don't know if it's called, you know, Rescue. Re- Let me look to see what the name of the movie is. Chippendale is Ch- Chippendale Rescue Rangers is the name of the goddamn film. So, is it? Uh, and they, you know, again, they have, and then you see the characters from the old movie, they come back, and it's a lot of like, like Roger Rabbit. I don't know about you. I remember when I saw, you might have been a little old for this, but Roger Rabbit, when it came out, was like, holy shit, Daffy and Donald Duck are on the same screen together. Yeah, that was, wild. you know. Yeah, it was crazy. We grew up back in the day when the Jetsons and the Flintstones having a crossover episode was like Huge. front page news. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So Kiss seeing- was on Scooby Doo once or something like that. It blew up my fucking mind. <laughs> right? Because Scooby used to have the monkeys on. You know, and you guys remember, hey, hey, we're the monkeys. I used to watch that shit. So like the monkeys would show up on Scooby Doo and blow my mind. That's why I started doing mushrooms. <laughs> thank you thank you Sco- scooby-doo is definitely the gateway cartoon for uh, yeah. a lot of drugs in this world um all right so we'll wrap things up we had this we had this uh questionnaire sent by i think it was actually daddy boy chaps who sent it in and it's a little game we wanted to play and it's called how dad are you i think he found it on instagram it's something that's a lot easier to play with one or two people so if anyone at home all you got to do 
get a little piece of paper out or you can even take out your notes app. And anytime you've done this as a dad, you can do it if you're a mom, you can do it if you're, you know, uncle, aunt, whatever the fuck it may be. But this is something that is very, very, these are very dad jokey. And I'm just going to do a running tally here. Again, Mr. Half a hundred years, 10 years on me. So he probably has yes. a few more experience with this, but I'm a little bit cornier than he is. And we'll see how many of us have done this. So it's a how daddy. I'm going to say, I'm going to say a line and kind of when the dad would say it. And if you have done this at least just once in your life, you mark down a little tally. If not, we can go on and then we'll, we'll, we'll add up the scores at the end. Okay. This Ready is like that TikTok trend. Put down a figure, right? You ever see that? Put down a finger if you've ever done anal. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And it's like a Catholic nun. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I love it. All right. First one. Yes. Cashier scanning the item doesn't go through. And you say, guess it's free then. <laughs> Has the big man ever done that? I have 100% done that. Okay. I 100% done that. I have not done that one. Uh, the, you're using the stud finder. And you're on the wall. Dee -dee 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 -dee, and you point to yourself, go, guess I found one. And you 100%. are the stud. Yeah, 100%. By the way, I did the first one yesterday. I paid for the, um, I paid for the meal. <laughs> And I would use the wrong credit card. Like it was a credit card that it, it, Annie put in a credit card that it expired. We just got the new ones. So the woman said, oh, you know, it's very nice. She's like, Mr. McCarthy. I was like, oh, you know what? What Did it not go through? Does that mean the meal is free? So I just fucking did the first <laughs> one yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> no, less than 24 hours ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> yes. The stud one. I mean, if you haven't done that in your life, yeah. I, I was definitely even before dad. Yeah. Uh, kid gets hurt, crying down. And the dad looks and goes, Looks like we're going to have to amputate it. <laughs> Always, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that when the kid thinks they might have to amputate it. It's like, Are you kidding me? I still got the bone from Bridget's foot. <laughs> right? You can hear it clinking in the glass. By the way, look at that thing. It's all rotted now and there. That oh. is some, that's metal, as our boy Robbie, Robbie Fox would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, next one. Uh, all right, let's rock and roll whenever you're, you're going to leave the house. Let's rock and roll is not me. Okay. I, don't think, I don't know if I've ever said let's rock and roll. My my dad did say it, and I realize as I'm reading this that I now say it as well. So that, right. that one goes for the climb. Uh, kid, kids, you know, <laughs> this probably happens a large a lot. Knocking on the door in the bathroom, you know, no answering or not. Did you fall in? <laughs> yeah, I've done fall in one. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> I, 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 my, you know, I only have one kid that's been potty trained the whole time. AJ just got potty trained within the last year, and I'm only dealing with one, and I've said it. So I was imagining in a house of three, uh, three children, you've probably done. And this is a guy that loves his bathroom, as we know, loves. Oh. His Oh, it's a happy place. I, well, you also have the urinal now, too. So, oh, is yeah. the urinal in the new house, or that's no. that left the ah, damn. three urinals in the other house, none in this house? Some, some like a uh, comedian they clipped him saying how urinals are white trash, or like, are you poor? Somebody not aimed at me. I'm like, fucking, what a bad take. <laughs> I'm, re I'm reasoning now, and I know my dad is from Ireland, so he's never been quote unquote hip. I don't think he said any of these. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that right? That's the other thing for the people playing at home. Has your dad done this to you when you were growing up? Yeah. If you don't have kids, I think that's yeah. a fair way to play it. And I think my dad is my dad's done. I think basically all of these. Uh, uh, next one, uh, someone there. You know, tie your tie your, like go to your right and they go to the left. No, your other right. Other, yeah, yeah, I've done yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, me too. By the way, a little alone thing about me. I don't know my left from right. And he goes, uh, whenever we're driving, oh, no. she'll be like, uh, right turn up here, like towards me. She'll say that all the time. Like, <laughs> I'll be like, what? So, and I, and I just, I don't know. I've, I'm terrible at left and rights. Go ahead. That's one of the, that's one of the like largest, his goddamn logo that he made in pure arrogant fashion is, you know, the word large and then a brain on top. <laughs> yeah. The, the man can, can go on a story about Marie Antoinette, you know, uh, getting catfished back when she was around. Yeah. Can't tell his left from his right. That's just the beauty of you large yeah. man. Um, looking at a bill. What's the damage? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what's the damage? 100%. 100%. Yeah, what I break a window. <laughs> yeah, that one uh neighbor washing their car hey can you do mine next yeah I'm not sure, all the time <laughs> or if they're raking leaves ah right, you get mine next Thanks. <laughs> oh i'm so terrible uh you know mick comes down catches you or you guys are watching say the bama game and then you know you're here's a little snore come out and he's hey dad wake up and you go i was just resting my eyes <laughs> yeah i've done that too nope, yeah nope. let me just rest my eyes for a second <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm, I'm fine i'm awake i'm just resting my eyes uh See a friend in, oh, this is, 
this is 100 percent you see someone and go guess don't let anyone in here I'm, yeah <laughs> i think you pulled that on me i think you've actually pulled that one on me before <laughs> i have not done that one but I, that is that is a large t uh when when okay when you see the traffic, you're going north on the Garden State Parkway, and then south is jammed. And you say, glad we're not going that way. <laughs> yeah, I did that <laughs> yesterday, too. I, I used to do a thing where I would laugh or I'd wave at the people, too, when I was a little yeah, yeah. Beep, young man just being a dick. Yeah. Yep. Um, forgetting, if you forget your car keys, can't get far without these. I don't know. No, don't know that. No, nope, nope. not me either. Uh <laughs> I'm sorry. This one's funny. So you look horses every time you pass horses. <laughs> I do it every time. I do it when there's signs for horses. Oh, kids, there's horses in the area. I don't know what it is. I, just, I feel you know, seen. You know those giant hay bales that they have? They're usually like circular. I don't know how, yes. like whatever they do, they make them into like giant, you know, like rolls. When, when I'm driving, I yell at the top of my lungs, hey, like that. And everyone looks around, they see big hay. You know? Yep, yep, that's <laughs> yeah. a good one. What do gay horses eat? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and we say that as an ally. We say that as we joke as, as an ally. Love is love. Two holes in a heartbeat. Yep. <laughs> uh, two heartbeats. You can't well, have just one heartbeat. That, 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 that's wrong. Mm. Um, I'm not paying to heat the whole neighborhood when the door is open. Yeah, my yeah, dad. Exactly. The, my dad's name is Cornelius, and the um, so that's my dad's first name. And the utility in Brooklyn is Con Edison. And my dad, you say that's the only one that I remember because he doesn't do a lot of corny stuff. So my my name may be Con, but it's not Con Edison because everyone just called <laughs> Con. Good. That's a good one. That's that's a good one out of Con. I wonder if that's on here because that you know you start mixing <laughs> the name around. I was born at night, but not last night. Not last kind of night that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, we have a few more left here. Uh, we are carrying something heavy. It's not heavy, just awkward. No, I've said that no. before. I don't think oh, I've really? said it to the kids, but I've just I think I said it like again this week. Oh, we were moving stuff out of the garage. We got a new shed, which is mwah, I just love having a shed in my oh, yard. Yeah. And I said to the wife, I go, it's not heavy, it's just awkward. And we're like this this big <laughs> clunky uh, shelf we were moving out there. Uh, every time you're in town, people don't know how to drive in this town. <laughs> oh my god, Annie is the fucking worst with that. <laughs> Annie is the worst. <laughs> Do you have you said it though? Or you're like, oh, New Jersey, New Jersey drivers. These yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I usually say it when I'm in a different, like, you know, like Utah people. Oh, they're terrible. <laughs> you know, like that type of shit. I never forget. I was driving back from a road trip and we were passing the welcome to New Jersey sign. We we're coming, I think, from the Kentucky Derby. You said welcome to Jersey. And as we're doing that, some fucking dickhead in that with a yellow Jersey legs, but just cuts us off in a complete un unnecessary turn. And I was like, yep, welcome back to Jersey there. Uh, <laughs> We needed this rain every single time oh. it rains. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I I was like singing the praises of the rain yesterday. We got a little shower here. I was like, man, my grass has needed oh, this needed rain. This I had I have to get some more Sunday. The product outside is starting to hurt. No free ads. No free um Oh, you decline the warranty and, and you tell them that's how they get you. That's how they, that's get, how you. they get you kids. <laughs> yeah, I teach my kids that all the time. <laughs> same here yeah. no fucking don't you those geek squad best buy all of them even don't you fall for any of their scams it's all a bunch of bullshit the That's insurance when you rent a car no yep. way no, no way. way your credit card covers you with a bunch of that stuff with the insurance i remember hearing so um let's see uh when someone comes back inside the house because they forget something back already how was it <laughs> yeah yep. i love that yeah, yep. yeah i love yeah, yeah. throwing them at that one um after tying something down that's not going anywhere that ain't going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of like you give it a you give it a late uh you give it like a little tug or something like that yeah, you know? yeah. um all right so that's all added up here 20 different questions the big man 17 out of 20 that's an 85 percent. if we were going <laughs> for how dad are you i'm at 85 percent. i had uh 15 out of 20 so uh that's where we are everyone if whether you're a dad a mom you wanted to do your dad's things in terms of what he used to do wh whatever you want to do give us the audience tweet at us at podfather show that motherfucker joey langone give us your number your score out of 20 and we'll see who has the high and the low so again 17 is the one to beat from the podcast with the big man and uh, i i feel like we could get a 20 out of 20 maybe a 19 out of 20 and there's probably a couple people who from another part of the country i feel like this is very northeast related but that's just maybe my dumb ass thinking I, i've never used a pair of tongs without trying them out first 
Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. I've never, I've never just pulled a pair of tongs out, used them to flip a piece of hot meat, washed them and put them back in a drawer without at least once going chip, chip. Like, you know what I mean? Like to click them together as if to test whether or not they work or not. I, yep. I don't know if that's a dad thing, but that's definitely a me thing too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I, there, there it's, I think it's almost like a tick. I feel like once you have the good click, 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 click. Yeah. Or, or you, you always have to, um, if someone else is grilling up, how's it looking? You just kind of like, <laughs> you know, you know, nod the approval there. So again, 17 out of 20 for large, uh, 15 out of 20 for your pal Clem. Give us your score at pop other show, Instagram or Twitter. We'll send out the, uh, I'll send Joey the list too. So everyone can do it at home if they want to actually see it or send it to your, uh, your friends. This has probably been on Instagram or TikTok like two years ago, but we just got to it on the show now because we're old and watched. So uh, by this time, when everyone's listening, our boy large is to be going through it. Say a prayer for the man, uh, tweet at him. Give us your, uh, give him your best, give him your thoughts, prayers. Most of all, Annie, because Annie's not only dealing with losing, uh, her oldest for a little bit. She's also has to deal with any of the, oh, and he's all bruised up from Canelo too. And I said this to you before we went live. Canelo, I feel like he's the patron saint of all of us, you know, the people who know you and love you, but would love just to fucking hurt you a little yeah, bit just because you've earned it. I love that he fucking leaves his mark just so then, you know, I yeah. can see the pain on your body. So, uh, you know, again, be careful what you say to Annie here. I know you, you, you hit her with the, I bought. There's only there's five of us going down, but only four of us coming back. So oh. we're a little on air fair. Like, what are oh. you doing, you six out of? Oh, um, my brother hit her with, like he drove away first. He had to get to the bank apparently, and my brother was like, you know, Annie, it's the last time he's gonna drive away from Arturo's from you guys. As I, oh. and Annie's like, stop. I'm like, I'm like, it's not funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's not funny. <laughs> Give him a little a little low five though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't funny, Neil. I got to deal with this. So, uh, so yeah. So we're going to go from there. Um, and by the way, fuck Apple iPhones, because every day, five years ago today, it's always a picture of Mick lately. You know what I mean? They give you the five years. Oh, ago, that's years. fucked up. Every day, it's a picture of Mick. I, 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 it's crazy that, you know, you don't pay attention to them, right? And it's every fucking day. I have a working theory. I mean, everyone knows that you say something out loud. You say, oh, man, I need to get a new pair of sunglasses. And then the next minute you're on Instagram, there's seven sunglasses ads all in a row. Yeah. I think we've gotten to the point where they can read minds because my wife was thinking about changing, like, the trim of our house in, like, the rooms. And there was an ad. She's like, I didn't say a thing. I didn't look up anything. I just thought it. And they they, they probably have heard you say, you know, oh, Mick's going to college. So they're like, let's fucking pump some sadness into this man's heart. And he'll watch it. He'll look at these pictures. And, oh. Six years ago today, him and Finn Dog. You know they what I mean? Like, like they look so young too, man. That's just kind of hammering home that my my two are gonna be that young and I, they'll be fucking hate this. Sienna's right. not gonna leave us. That's the good thing. Sienna's there's no way she's sta- she's without like more than two hours away at any given moment. You think so? Yeah. And I, I will say this as someone that looks back at college and loved Sienna College, na- loved it so much I named my daughter after it, met my wife there. Uh love love my saints. I always regret not just going the go to a Southern school, just fucking party your ass off and enjoy, you know, sports. It's like Sienna made the tournament once when I was there. I think we were 12 and 18 heading into the back tournament. And, you, you know, it was fun as shit. And then, you, you know, we, we got our, our doors blown off by Maryland, who won the national championship. We did cover only team that covered for the record. Um, but this kind of like. There was something about being able to go home for Columbus Day weekend, have some of mom's sauce, and you know, just hang out with pops, watch you know whatever football game was on TV and shit like that. So, I don't uh, think I don't think Finn's gonna want to go away or go away as far. Like I don't I don't think. And then Bridget's not allowed, so the rest of them are, are figured out. Bridget can go 15 minutes from home. That's it. I'm not fucking putting a girl out there. These animals. Yeah. These know? animals, so, man. Fuck that. So we'll see. So this is this is our uh, maiden voyage. And so we'll see how it works out, and hopefully it works out terribly, and he's back within six months. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Alabama goes 0-14, no one saw it coming, and that just leads to, to, to Mick and the fuck out of Dodge. Uh, so when are you flying back, big man? Uh, so I'll be back Saturday night. All right, Saturday so hopefully night. we have the whole crew back together next week, and uh, yeah, that's the Saturday trip. Uh, thoughts and prayers to you guys. So we'll see you guys next week. As always, stay safe and stay safe.